Hi. So as mentioned, I will try to tell you today about current options in how to monitor databases with Zabbix. Okay, but first, why? I guess most of you understand how crucial databases are in any IT environment. Uh, not just Zabbix uses the database. As you know, Zabbix will stop working if the DB is down. Now, that might be very important, but often you will have even more important databases. And if they are down or perform bad, well, you might be losing money, lots of money. So you want to notice early if performance is decreasing. You want to know immediately if it's down. Plus, if the DB is handling some types of uh, business processes, it might also have some useful information about those processes in it, and you could monitor those too. I will have a short uh, use case at the end. So how at the moment? Recommended, I believe, are the first two options, so using ODBC and Agent2. There's also user parameters, which is kind of a universal tool for everything. Those two could be used. So let's look at ODBC in more details, how it works. The good thing about ODBC is that it provides a single interface to communicate with multiple types of databases. So Zabbix only communicates with Unix ODBC. And then, depending on the database type, you could use different driver. And what happens after that? Well, we, we don't even need to know. The driver knows how to work with this DB, so it connects and executes some queries. If you install Zabbix uh, from our provided packages, Unix ODBC is already built in, but you might need to install specific drivers for your database. There are instructions in our documentation how to do that, which drivers to use, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, and in more details from Zabbix's side, it is the ODBC polar that communicates with ODBC. You need to start at least one such polar, otherwise those items will not work at all. And it is not asynchronous, it is a synchronous process, so the amount you will need, it will depend on how many databases are you monitoring from this server or proxy, uh, how, what types of queries, how long do they execute, so in the end, there is no universal rule. You just need to see how busy they are and start more as needed. OK, and then the items you can use to actually get data out of a database. OK, so DB ODBC select. This is one of the simplest ones. It will just return one value. So the query you built for it should return just one value. OK, but if it returns more, Zabbix will use only the first column, first row. Other ones are just completely ignored. OK, it also offers you built-in discovery, but this is a legacy approach to it. A bit later, I will show you why this is not recommended anymore. But in short, it does the discovery. Whatever is returned from the query you execute there, columns will become uh, macros, LLD macros, which can immediately be used in item prototypes. And then you create those simple ODBC select items, fill in parameters in them from the discovery, and those items should start working. The new approach to do that, as we have introduced in many other places in Zabbix, is to create one item which collects lots of values, okay, and then build dependent items on that. And here, this is now ODBC.get. Create a query that gets information about, well, all the metrics you want, Plus, also, if you need some discoveries, also return data useful for discoveries. It returns a standard JSON value. From that, you can build a dependent discovery rule, define LLD macros from, well, standard JSON pass. And item prototypes then are also dependent items where you define preprocessing steps, how to extract one single value from it, and use those same macros in preprocessing. OK, so at the moment, we have official templates for ODBC for Microsoft SQL, MySQL, Oracle, and PostgreSQL. It's really simple to implement them. Just set up ODBC, create a host, link template to it, and it should work. Some macros also. Now, what's the difference between the old approach where each item gets its own value 
they do lots of connections to database. Lots of simple, small, but still lots of queries, lots of connections. Instead, now we do this one connection that gets everything. We have dependent items after that, and Zabbix itself figures out what value goes where, how do we want to use it, and well, less load on the database is better always. Okay, then the current new options using Agent2 plugins. Okay, so existing integrations from Agent2. So for the classical relational SQL database, so Oracle, MySQL, and PostgreSQL are already covered. Microsoft SQL coming soon. So the plugin itself and uh, template is supposed to be released soon. But not only those types of databases, there are other types. We had a bit of a discussion in the morning, can you call this a database or not? Let's not go into that. There's the, and also object stores or many other things could be monitored. So there are also other plugins for the agent too. Okay, so most of those plugins will come pre-installed with agent two. Any current agent two will have them. A couple of them come on a separate packages then you need to also install those. They used to be dependencies of Agent 2, now they are not. As we did also in, in the morning, we installed an additional package to be able to monitor MongoDB or PostgreSQL. And they're available from our repository. Okay, so how to set it up? Well, in this case, no ODBC. The agent itself knows how to communicate with the database. And this is then a Zabbix agent built-in item. So you need to install Zabbix agent. You need to prepare the database. Again, maybe some user needs to be prepared, some permissions, but depends on the DB type. And in Zabbix, you just create a host with an agent interface, but a big benefit from this is that you could also use active agent for monitoring it. Depending on your environment, that might be the only option. And well, assign the template, enter some macros, and you should be good to go. One uh, thing that often confuses people is uh, where do I put the DB address, what is the agent interface address, and how does that all work together? So here it's important to understand there are two connections here. One is Zabbix server or proxy communicates with the agent, and then agent interface you need to provide with the address where the agent is running. And the second connection is from agent to the database. Okay, and in the macros, you need to define address, how does the agent connect to the database. Okay, so one option is, well, install the agent on the same host where you have your database. Then, in Zabbix server, you define address of that host for the agent interface. An agent is then locally connecting to the DB. But maybe for some reason you cannot install the agent on database or don't want to. Well, just as well, this will work. Agent is installed on Zabbix server. Connection is local there. And then agent connects to database. Or maybe in some cases it's even more important to see not if the DB is available. It might be. But is it available to the application that's supposed to use it? There might be a third host somewhere here, the application that connects to DB. So put the agent there and then you're monitoring it from that location, and well, you can kind of trust that your application should also be available if the DB is available. Okay, just like for ODBC, there are built-in templates, as I mentioned, and a similar approach is used. So there is one or multiple items that each will collect a certain amount of values, and then there is dependent items which each extract some details out of it. I won't show these details again, we explained how that works already in ODBC. And in the end, it doesn't matter which one you use, you end up having metrics, having triggers, and, well, seeing what's going on on the DB. Now, with Agent 2 plugins, it used to be a bit of a problem that the items that were built in would return, well, a static amount of metrics, and if you need some other customizations, you couldn't do it. Well, that's uh, solved now. There are custom query options. So if you need some other query, just create an item, custom query, prepare it, and then again, it returns a JSON object. Use it in LLD, use it in dependent items, or however else you need to. 
Okay, we also have some other methods. As I mentioned, user parameters, universal tool for everything. If you can execute a command and get back a result, you can use user parameter to collect such values. This used to be the main approach in, well, monitoring databases. Well, also DB, but or DBC, but still. Right now, I would not start using it, but if you still have it, it works. Well, why not? Okay, next we also have some other database types and different collection methods depending on those. Okay, so these also are available templates in Zobbix, comes out of the box. Uh, Java items could be used to monitor them. Uh, HTTP items could be used if this application has some standard API we can use. And then again, some dependent items and extract the metrics that we need. Well, okay, and now I promised a very simple use case how to monitor business processes. And it indeed is very simple. So there's an application in which some users create invoices for customers, and there is, well, some other program that's supposed to read it, prepare PDF, and send it out. And for unknown reasons, that other process often just stops working. It's up, it shows as running, but doesn't do anything. Simple restart solves the situation, but of course, here, if we need to, well, wait for a user to notice this, report to somebody, and then somebody goes and manually intervenes, well, that's not good. Customers are not getting their invoices. Maybe then they say, well, we didn't get the invoice, so we're not paying it today anymore. And so simple custom query gets the data, how many unsent emails do we have in the database, build a trigger if there's more than what we need. Well, this is a problem. And maybe even run a remote command to automatically restart that process. So no human intervention needed at all. Okay, that's all from me. Thank you.